I'm uh, no C. Um, I haven't been streaming very much uh, recently just because of uh, being back at work and that taking a majority of my time. Um, at teacher, I got some new classes this year, which has been eating away at me. So Magic has been a little bit on the back burner recently. So sorry if you're looking for Elves content. Um, I'm still playing. Um, but I, I mostly talk about elves and um, where I think the deck should be going on my uh, Discord. Um, it's just most convenient for me. So if you are looking uh, for advice or anything about this deck or you just want to talk about it, um, feel free to join in. But anyway, I just wanted to spend this time um, to talk about the deck a little bit, the, the decisions I made getting to where I am with it, and uh, do a recap of the event that I just got second place in, the Pioneer Challenge. Um, so <clears throat> I'm on 19 lands, a um, couple changes um, that I can go over from, from before. Uh, we have six green-white lands because white is really important with our new card. Um, we're down to three Blooming Marshes. We got our Beseju, we got our Forest, and we have eight of these uh, Tri-Lands, essentially. Um, they're Tri-Lands for all the Elves that we can cast. Um, we cut Naru Traver because we can't really afford um, to run that many uh, black cards in the deck anymore. Um, so we're running the next best, next best thing, which is uh, Sinul Stalwart. Um, otherwise, things are pretty pretty much the same, except for our previous three flex spots are now all taken up by one of the best cards that Elves has gotten in a really long time. Probably the best card since that we've gotten since uh, Leafcrown Visionary. Um, yeah, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, that's really the only mainstay that we've gotten in the past year. Um, yeah, where Fox Bodyguard has been really, really awesome, and um, you'll see some gameplay with it that uh, that you know it, it made it apparent that it did some work. Um, over to the sideboard, you know, we had to make some major, major changes just because of uh, the fact that we don't play black anymore. We can't really cast removal spells. <laughs> so, um, what did what are we doing? Um, Vivian is still great into. Uh, control and Rakdos and things like that, so I want to keep it. If we bring in Vivian, um, we kind of need, you know, with three Vivian especially, we kind of need a way to bridge the gap to five mana, so I'm bringing these in. Um, I think they're really helpful, especially when people are playing sweepers, you can kind of like expedite your way to get there, or help you recover and not feel the damage from a sweeper quite as much. I'm never leaving home without these, um, you know, our artifact and enchantment. Removal suite, um, really good quarter calling. Um, Reclamation, Reclamation Sage is a little bit better, but sometimes you need a Mass Vandal because you're uh, either being removed or you need a little bit earlier when you can only do X equals 2, so um, with Quarter Calling, so we're playing both. Um, some of the <clears throat> the classics, we got Phyrexian Revoker um, for Mono Green, we got Solus Jailer for Graveyard Decks, we got Selfless Spirits for Sweepers, we got Draineth Magistrate for um, trying to cast things from Exile like Bring the Light, and uh, these are all, I don't know, like, new question mark. Um, I think Yasharn is really good against Rakdos Sack. I wouldn't leave Homer without it right now. Um, I think Werefox Bodyguard is really good against decks where we want removal, such as Rakdos Sack, such as Phoenix. Um, and Guardian of Faith, since we're playing more white, I'm a little bit more comfortable bringing this in. Just good against sweeper decks. So we got all those. Um, these are all, I don't know, pretty solid. We might not need that fourth Werefox bodyguard um, out of the board. And these are my two iffy spots in the sideboard. Um, I've seen people play Thalia on Twitter today. That looked pretty cool um, as like a cord target. Um, I was thinking about pause for reflection. But I went for the fourth wear fox just for consistency. And the last one I chose, Judge's Familiar. Um, you might be thinking that sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, but I'm a little bit desperate against the Phoenix decks. Um, and I thought having, since we're kind of like um, leaning on anti sweepers of Guardian of Faith and Selfless Spirit and Wear Fox Bodyguard, um, we can't really play around three mana sweepers anymore with the sideboard plan. So why not just have a three mana sweeper disruptor at X equals one? And Judge is familiar, probably does that the best, right? Um, they play a tap land, or they don't play their land yet. They play their three mana sweeper. We judge familiar it, and we might live to tell the tale. Um, that's the idea, at least. Um, we'll see if it actually works. It's it's worked out a couple times, um, but that's the seventy five I'm going with, um, and that's what I played in the challenge. So let's go over to game history um, and. 
yeah, we'll just walk through every game. How's it going? Thanks for joining. All right, game one. I don't remember. I think we played against Mono White here. Um, Mulligan, a hand without a one drop. Um, we are on the draw, but we have a really solid hand against Mono White. As long as we can slow them down, um, we're doing some really powerful things. We need a one drop kind of to really take off, but um, I think we're okay. Thalia is not great here. Uh, but we can play a, a Dwinnin's Leaf safely. Just want to point out, Dwinnin's Leaf is definitely better here if I can't trigger the War Master anyway, right? Um, so we, we, you know, we're trying to stand up some blockers. King blocking Thalia was was my choice here. I could definitely have tried to just like trade one for one with this, um, but they're taking out one thing anyway, um, and I'm on the defense for a while, or at least for the foreseeable future. So I went for that. Looking back, that plays like. Fine, you know, if they had like a second Thalia, you know, Thalia's not the best two drop against a land or elf, especially when they know we're on elves, right? So they probably are like either stacked up on Thalia's or um, don't have a great two drop follow up and are going to play a three anyway. So maybe it was better to put the one one here and just deal with the Thalia. It's not like we have a cord or a cocoa in hand or could really cast it if we drew one anyway. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Brutal Cathar, um, some natural progression again. Um, Brutal Cathar is their best card other than Brave the Elements game one. Um, them taking Land of War Elves right there made it a little bit awkward because we couldn't double spell this turn. Land makes it a little bit more awkward even. So I played out War Master because it's the highest upside. I could have also like played Leaf Crown and tried to like trade here if they attacked, but they're probably not attacking with this no matter what. Modern season's been garbage to you. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm i uh, really low on modern right now. Okay, so they attacked in. We took the obvious trade. Take, take, um, did they attack with this? I, I feel like I should have snapped off a block there. Just going to throw that out there. But uh, I, I guess it's close. Um, we get our elf back, which allows us to double spell even if we don't draw the land. Um, and this doesn't have the threat to flip. This starting to flip is huge. Um, so I feel like that was wrong. Maybe I was thinking about like upgrade the elements or something in combat. Um, but we drew the land, so this is an awesome turn. Um, we kind of like caught up on board, even have an attack to get in there, which is crazy. It's going to take a uh, trade with two things, so I'm happy to take that trade. Um, we got to start racing. Um, this collected company, just want to point out, has to be has to be um, cast on our turn. Oh, we can't cast Collected Company. I'm just casting a Shaman in a pack and drawing. That's good, too. Um, but I, if we were going to cast Collected Company, we got to do it on our turn so that it doesn't trigger this this Brute. Um, what's my favorite game? Um, I at Magic, probably. I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 recently, too. Big fan. So they get a Thalia, that's not very good. Casting an Ossification, that's pretty good here, especially against this. They still don't really have attacks, but they do get to trigger this again. A little bit scary, but we get to play both of these and then set up for a collecting company in the future. Very powerful. Obviously, them triggering Brutal Cathar. Scary in the future, but um, not the worst. So I'm doing this. I'm just going to pause. Whoa. Great. All right. So I'm doing that block because um, I don't want them to... I want them to have to spend the mana here if, if they do spend mana. Um, I think it's really important. You know, they have two cards in hand. One of them is a Thalia, so we don't know what the other one is. And I don't also want to give them a bunch of free chip damage with... Uh, What's it called? With this, like if they hit us for four, um, there for free, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, that's lethal next turn. So I feel like they were forced to do that a little bit. Seems like obvious that they have um like double spell or something. Not not quite sure, but it's a really good collected company where Fox Bodyguard is nuts in that. 
Brave the Elements is obviously helpful there, but they only have pro white, not pro green here. Um, I probably could have attacked. Um, maybe I was thinking that they did. Oh, you know what happened? I'm just going to pause. I clicked through my attack step. That's how you know this tournament went well, right? You click through your attack, attack step, um, you get a free attack, and then they concede anyway. That's just how we drew it up. Um, I did give them the opportunity to draw nothing, right? I don't think they have anything that, that wins here. I don't think... I'm trying to think... Yeah, nothing wins there. So, so I mean, we had it locked up, but sometimes you just got to click through attacks after you're thinking about it. Um, going on to game two. Am I a daily streamer? No, not really. I kind of just do it as a pastime. Um, we keep a hand that's a little bit awkward if this land of worlds is removed. Just bear sentinel is a helpful draw. Um, so we're going to try to develop as quickly as possible. This Twins Elite's looking nice. Um, we can get Despair Sentinel out there. Um, I've streamed for like a year now. Once again, I don't do it very often. Portable Hole's good. Makes our blocks a little awkward here. They get a free three in. Otherwise, we could have um, been a little bit more, uh, had a little bit more development. Um, double spelling leaf crown visionary is is pretty good. We get a three three blocker, feeling pretty good. I think paying this mana is actually what cost me the game because um, I, I think I set myself up for a little bit more chip damage than I needed to, but we'll see. This is a couple days ago, so I don't really remember everything. I guess I'm remembering incorrectly. What would they reveal? They got dauntless bodyguard and another copper coat. Um, so they are setting themselves up nicely for a situation where they can um, just brave the elements for the win. And I think this race is now won by them. Um, so we can kind of like continue development. I'm trying to draw some cards here while also like um, getting blockers down. You know, we're probably not going to block with this leaf crown or anything. So this might be a good one. Um, really what, what it comes down to is I need them to attack and then untap the Shaman of the Pack, but we can't win this race either way. There's going to be 15, nothing we can do about it. Um, maybe I was, you know what, I think that the reason I drew here was because I can draw extra cards. I'm, I'm winning the game next turn no matter what. If I can draw a cord, I can actually stop a Brave the Elements. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm playing to that out. Hey, how's it going? Um, going to game three. Thanks for joining Trinosphere three. If I, you allow, you want to, um, yeah, I, mean, I guess you could introduce yourself. Um, uh, so this is game three. Um, we get portable hold, but we have a hand that's pretty good against portable hole. Um, just get some development. As long as they don't remove anything else, we can do it in Elite and Leaf Crown. We can do that in Draw Card if we draw a land. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so I choose to draw the card there. It's it's pretty close with that in in Dwindle's Elite. I think that being on the play and having so much development, the, the card is going to be worth more than like the possible two damage. This two damage is going to be hard to get in anyway, because it's only really going to come if they um, Brutal Cathar this and attack. Um, so I, I think I'm comfortable with that play. This could be a, a pretty easy block, but I feel far enough ahead and, and I have things against uh, Brave the Elements that, that I think I can take that, that risk, I guess. Let's get some more development out there. We have quarter calling for later, which is awesome. Yeah, this is starting to feel like a game we could probably never lose, but Brave of the Elements is a powerful card. Full game two, so. So we get some nice blocks here, and we can cord for a Lord. So Agondo doesn't really change much about that. Um... 
It's still powerful. They save one creature. And there's a concession. Yeah. Order calling, best card in the deck. Jumping into round two. Solid hand, one drop. It's a little bit top heavy, but we're on the draw, so we have time. Um, any blue red land is scary to see right off the bat, so uh, not thrilled here. I was thinking it's Phoenix with like a weird list, but then you see this card and you realize that it's going to be some kind of combo deck. Ends up being Jeskai Ascendancy. I don't know this at the time, but I'm just going for the maximum development. Um, you know, trying to go as fast as I can. I'm trying to be mindful of what they mill. Like, are they milling spell pierces? Like, what's going on? Um, we get a pretty powerful collected company. Thrilled. Get some decent development. Not the not the best, but uh, you know, setting ourselves up for a Coco and a Cord in the future um, could be really powerful. So they get to cast a Treasure Cruise. Obviously, that's great. Um, hold on. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I do this uh, small time, so I don't want to waste your time if you're here to, to, to sell your stuff. Um, I, I'm, I'm not really looking to develop this channel any further than it already is, but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right, collected company. We get a War Master and a Leaf Crown Visionary. Get some more development. Um, get some attacks in. We save save up for a quarter calling. If they take too much damage here or they tap out, I think that we have lethal. Let me just pause. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay. They have to shock. Um, I also have a cord for Werefox bodyguard. It's going to be really good here. You know, it's bad for against a removal spell or something like that, but they let it happen. So thrilled about that. Kind of shocked to see so such little development happen here um, from them. Like I don't know what kind of interaction they have, but it I guess wasn't enough to to do well against what we had. So what was the strangle targeting this? Yeah, I mean I think we just had lethal on board anyway, but they had one more trigger with just high intensity. Maybe they could get Mox and a retraction helix. Right, that could have done it for him. Um, but yeah, we we win game one, and it was uh kind of kind of scary, kind of scary. All right, I'm on um I'm on one Besiege in this list. I'm on one. Oh no, I'm all set. Thank you though. You can you can bring your business elsewhere. Um, so we quick pause. Um, I brought in Phyrexian Revoker because I, I, I kind of like it as a, an out with quarter calling where I can name whatever they retraction helix. Kind of nice. Obviously, it's not great to just naturally draw. Um, but what are you going to do? I didn't really know what else to name. Definitely, like, Emery's the name, right? Like, if I, if I, Knew that was going to happen. I kind of kicked myself for doing this. I, I think I lose the game for this reason. Mass Vandal looking really awkward against the Tormod script, but we do have quarter calling for two. All right, so we get some development at this point. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna just do a quick pause here as a as a check in. Um, yeah, just quick pause here as a check in. I'm feeling like kind of okay. You know, they could combo off, but they haven't, and they've had some opportunities. You know, now I have cord for um for three up, which is good. Um, this mass bundle feels like it's gonna be sitting in my hand for the rest of the game. But, you know, I can play it next turn to, like, trigger a, a warrior or something like that. Um, so I don't really know what they're going for, um, but I, I don't feel too bad against it. Um, drawing all these portable holes is definitely tricky. Um, I, I, I'm taking the advantage of this moment to cord for uh, an extra warrior um, and maybe have the opportunity to mass vandal next turn. But, you know, playing right into Radiant Flames... <laughs> 
<laughs> I actually like looking at that play, right? They portable hole my war master and then radiant flames away their emery afterwards. I was really confused. I played right into it, but I just did not expect them to have radiant flames in hand after going for the single target removal spell. Um, but you know, we got got. I go for the mass vandal here. Um, I I did this wrong, so I played this first because. When I played Mass Vandal, I was 100% sure they were going to Tormod script me, and then um, Mass Vandal doesn't work. So I just didn't play to the out of them not seeing the line. Um, I don't think that really cost me the game, but it cost me a token, which is pretty big. Because um, they de they did have that out, and I feel like you know they have their zero over here, so I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, quick pause. Okay. There we go. All right. This conversation's just gotten me a little distracted. Um, what just happened? They treasure cruise. They remove my Elvish War Master again. Yeah. And, and we're pretty much dead. We're drawn to nothing. Um, I don't think I need to. So, so I wanted to see what their end game was. You know, every time they mill, it gives me a little bit more information about the, what the contents of their deck looks like. They definitely have a lot of more single target removal spells. I know how to play. I know I have to play around rip apart in the future. Um, it doesn't seem they have sixteen cards left in their deck, and I haven't seen a Jeskai Ascendancy. Like, did they board out the combo and go for more of a controlling route? Like, I'm learning information about this. Um, I'm thinking that now I have to board in Selfless Spirit. But then they play Jeskai Ascendancy and combo me out. So um, I think I, I conceded here. Nothing interesting happens for the rest of the game. So I'm going to go to the last one. Oh, this is game. Oh, game three. OK. And I don't remember what happens here. I mean, obviously I win, but I don't remember how it goes. This is an insane hand. If they don't interact, this hand is dirty. Um, if they don't interact turn one. I don't remember if they do. But this is pretty much exactly what we want to happen every game. If we get on tap with War Master, like the game's over. Um, and they just cast an Emery. Again, um, we can we can kind of like protect ourselves with Court of Calling. I believe I have a uh, anti sweeper in the deck right now. Um, in Selfless Spirit, I'll probably court at the end step, so we'll see. But I think that they don't kill us. <laughs> Let's see if I'm right. Treasure Cruise. I mean, that's a pretty powerful turn. But they don't kill us, so they're dead. Let's see. Oh, oh I wish I could go back. I, I, saw, I saw a white card in there. So I definitely have a Selfless Spirit as protection. And uh, this attack is lethal. It can only block the two biggest things. I think it's exactly seven. I don't remember exactly. There it is. Just how we drew it up. If they didn't cast Treasure Cruise, they were alive, though. Interesting. Um, all right, on to round three. What do I play against here? Solid hand. Um, a little bit heavy with quarter calling and things like that, but if we can draw a one drop, it's awesome. This is scary. Really bad matchup here. Um, really open to just fade the removal spell. If we can fade a removal spell, draw some action next turn, I feel like we're in a decent spot. Um, they get Blood Tithe Harvester. You know, obviously that's not good for us. But we top deck that Werefox Bodyguard. So we get the trigger, um, and we get to take away the Blood Tithe Harvester, um, which is, you know, obviously great. Um, you know, they could always get it back and like get another blood token, but that was decent development, not the end of the world. <sighs> Hands a little bit anemic on their side. Um, any anything? I'm just gonna pause here. Our hand was really good um, at casting one spell a turn. So literally any spell. This is the weakest spell in the deck, and it was still a great draw because um, we could just play it and then set up for a quarter calling on their turn. Um, War Master getting to trigger twice in a turn cycle is huge. Um, so I'm thrilled to draw this. Uh, we get some attacks. I want to make sure there are three less back so I can get a Shaman or a Werefox if they um, get their 
King guy. Um, quick pause here. This seemed like a de I'm just going to pause. Yeah. This seems like a desperation um, claim the firstborn. And I'm courting for X equals three. Um, and I think I took the right line, but it might not be obvious. I think that um, the correct play here is to exile um, Sentinel Stalwart with Were Fox Bodyguard. Um, the reason being is because if they untap, if they claim grab my Sentinel Stalwart, um, and then they they like very obviously need the mana, right? Like they'll probably um, grab Sentinel Stalwart, untap with it, play their um, their Devil, whatever it's called, and then use Sentinel Stalwart to um, make a mana, use that mana, sack a bunch of things, kill a bunch of my guys. Um, so I thought that if that's their best line, and we can probably beat everything else other than like maybe like chaining or removal spells. That my best line is not to just shaman them for eight, bring them to six. Um, I think my best line is to take away that one mana. So if they follow up with the devil, I untap with a bunch of creatures, shaman them again. Um, and I, I think that's a lot better. Um, I think both are fine, but their potential is just so much higher if they if they had a plan relying on this mana. So so that's why I did it. So yeah, we get Wear Fox, we trigger the master. Um, and if they are not allowed to rely on that mana, I think that it's going to be a bad time for them. And that's exactly what happened, right? They play the Mayhem Devil. If they had one more mana, maybe they have like a Fatal Push. Maybe they can sack the Blood Token. Uh, I don't really know what, what their potential was. But um, we got in for some uh, good damage and set up for a nice quarter calling kill. We don't usually win game one there, um, so happy to steal it. Uh, we have a pretty heavy board. If you're interested in the sideboard for this deck, I do upload things on Patreon to, to help people. Um, this is a solid hand, um, especially if Land of War Elves does not die. Uh, we kind of want a two drop in it, or extra one drops. We draw the two drop, super happy about that. Um, kind of expecting it to be fatal pushed, but we dodge it, so that's great. Matchup gets a lot easier in that in that way. All right, you're probably. I'm just gonna pause. All right, actually, until that, until we drew that, I think um, there was debate as to which one to play. Um, that was an excellent draw, though. So, if I did not draw the Despair Sentinel, I still would have played this. And the reason being is because if Blood Tithe Harvester kills something next turn, I really want it to be what they perceive as the biggest threat, when in reality, because my hand, this is a much bigger threat because of Collected Company. I'm pretty much dead to a Mayhem Devil anyway, so why, why play around it? Um, we're just going to double spell and try to set up a situation where Collected Company is cast next turn, no questions asked. Table is a card that we can definitely beat. Um, and then we can also double spell this turn, which is awesome. Um, we have options here, but Werefox Bodyguard is so great against the Goblin Shaman token because they don't get it back, and then we get to trigger again. So I'm just trying to get a, a nice wide board. Um, we can set up for another Collected Company, we can set up for a Shaman, um, but we're in a pretty good spot. I think we had a Leaf Crown that was an option to take or something like that, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah, they're drawing the wrong half of their deck. You know, Fable's good in combination, like if they already had a Fatal Push or something like that. Um, but, you know, as of right now, nothing, nothing great is happening. Um, <clears throat> so this is... I don't know if I was tapping weird, um, but this is kind of interesting. Oh, this is actually... So in this situation, the way to maximize damage and mana is to play Shaman Trigger on the stack, use Despair Sentinel to tap that Shaman and wear Fox Bodyguard. Um, so that gets rid of their blocker and has both of them when this trigger goes off. Um, this doesn't show up very often, but just maybe take note of this if you're trying to learn the deck. Um, you know, it might feel like you want to play this first and then this. Um, I guess they work out the same way, don't they? Uh, ignore me. 
it works out the same way. Trigger on the stack. Yeah, we're, we're tapping one of these either way. Or maybe I took the safe route so that I could trigger these both. Hmm, you know what? I was thinking that I would attack here and eat with Werefox Bodyguard. But this isn't that big of a threat. I'm not really looking to get things in. So I can let them untap trigger Werefox Bodyguard and then have Collected Company. That's probably a better line anyway. We're not... Ooh, sorry. Um... Werefox is amazing in this matchup. Yeah, Werefo Werefox is incredible. Wouldn't have any other card. Um, really, really good. You know, obviously it's removed. It's not great, but the removal is taxed anyway. Any card um, they want to remove, they usually can. Um, it's it's mostly just how many they draw. And if you have more more heavy duty threats, then they have to make choices and things like that. Um, and am I stoked for Cavern Souls? Yeah, that's awesome. It's just a straight up upgrade to the other one. Um, I, I guess my biggest worry is if this deck gets too popular and people will know how to play against me. That part's not great. <laughs> um, so yeah, we wear Fox Bodyguard. I think it's really safe to take the token. Now that I'm thinking about it now, let's see what I actually take. It looks like I targeted... Oh, I targeted my Shaman of the pack. There it is. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's lethal, right? Shaman of the pack, um, untap. We just sack this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, round four. Now, uh, round four, we play against Doomwake, friend of the stream. Um, awesome guy. Uh, and we keep a really risky one-lander against him. Um, get Fatal Push, draw the land. Obviously, wouldn't have it any other way. Set up for a really solid uh, draw next turn. Um, <laughs> draw draw the land anyway yeah i got a little lucky here um but it, yeah, amazing development um really great wide board not really worried about sweepers game one um and I, I think we just you know pretty easily run away with it this game um fought through the two removal spells um excellent hand with a risky keep um game two game two i made a pretty serious blunder um, and lost the game. It was super close, though. Um, it wasn't even obvious to me at the time that it was a blunder. Um, but yeah, we have a solid hand to start. Play land or elves. We're going to go for some development later. Um, hoping to draw lands, obviously. Um, but they're on the play, so they get to be a little bit more aggressive than I was maybe expecting. Um, I'm hoping to draw the land so I can double spell here. Uh, and I do. Wow. We're just really good at drawing lands with this deck. Um, I'm feeling really good at this moment. I'm, I'm kind of happy to let this damage come through. Um, you know, I just really want to cast this collected company. They um they pump, pull the trigger a little bit early. I probably should have waited. I don't think it ends up mattering. I'm feeling thrilled, thrilled about uh, what just happened. It's probably debatable that I could have gotten a Shaman of the Pack there, but I was feeling like I needed um, to, I guess, play a little bit differently. Um, and I feel like I'm in the driver's seat right here. Um, it's hard to look at this situation and think that I'm in a losing situation, but um, I am. Um, if they just can play a shield or it, it's really tough, and, and that's exactly what happens, obviously. Um, I think, just quick pause, I think I could have been more aggressive here. I need to be able to block three things, this is this is like an easy send of three. You know, they eat one, but I'm happy to trade with one of these, right? Like, I'll use the other triggers here. Um, so I think that I, I lost some opportunities to get in some free attacks, unfortunately. Um, I just kind of, like, choose to develop my board and um, kind of, like, miss out on those opportunities. Um, you know, that would be helpful if I can Shaman leader or something like that. Um, I also, like, left two mana up. Um, for this Werefox bodyguard. Um, but, you know, natural development kind of on both sides. Um, but some interesting things happen. I sacrifice Werefox bodyguard because, for me, the life gain to get around a shoulder trigger was the most important thing. Um, I need, I, you know, I'm only taking damage from shoulder trigger pretty much for the rest of the game. Um, hit a Werefox bodyguard on top. That's super awesome. Develop my hand as much as possible. I'm not drawing this card. Um, 
play our Lanor develops, develop our board. We got a bunch of blockers, you know, in a pretty decent spot. Um, they're gaining life. I feel like attacking. I, I thought they were in a position where attacking was hard for them, um, but they obviously didn't feel the same way. Um, and this like looks like a removal spell to me. Um, but I'm thinking that since I can cast Werefox Bodyguard on my upkeep um, and then not take the damage from Shieldred, um, I'm thinking that I don't care about this three if they like remove here. I just need to make sure everything else is dead. Um, so I'm setting up some blocks. Um, I think I got a little bit aggressive with this double block here because um, that they have abrupt to gate there. I like that a lot less. Um, and I sacrifice one too many creatures. Um, but I can activate where Fox Bodyguard on their turn, which is awesome. Don't don't take that damage. Um, and then I can get some a little bit of natural development. I so this is where I think I blundered. Quick pause. I think I blundered here. Um, I held up Guardian of Faith mana, right? Very obviously, um, holding up Guardian of Faith mana or like cord mana, collect company mana, whatever. Um, I need to make sure all of these get blocked, and which is fine. Um, and they attack, you attack, do this, whatever. Um, now I let them go to damage. I was thinking, like, I should have either put more on here to force them to pay mana or not let them go to damage because I'm thinking that I'm untapping with enough to Guardian of Faith or I wanted to Guardian of Faith and I just didn't. If I Guardian of Faith there, I can't lose that game ever. Um, you know, it, it protects me from a sweeper. They didn't have, like, trample. I would just chump block essentially everything, but keep everything that I have and, and protect my board for the turn. Getting myself another board turn with Vivian, setting a collected company up in my hand. Like, it's so powerful. <laughs> it's uh, This was, like, such a bad move. Um, and now, because both of these need to tap something and I don't have enough things to tap, I just can't do anything. So, I... I have the ability to almost win anyway, but it's uh it's not good. It's not a good time. Um, I could be in the situation with like way more creatures with guards guardian of faith out, um, and a sweeper's like not great for them either, right? Because they have so many things on board. So um, huge misplay, huge misplay. Um, they do some natural board development. I'm at two. I have to sacrifice my Werefox bodyguard. I also have to cast this collected company. I have enough mana for both, which is great. Um, set up for a shaman on the pack on top. That's not bad. And if I was a little bit more aggressive with my attacks earlier, this shaman would be lethal. Or if I um, had cast Guardian of Faith, the shaman would be lethal. Um, so this play is pretty cool. Um, so I play the Warmaster. I think that was on top. Maybe it was from my hand. Um, which is great. And then I'm setting myself up to Vivian with a minus. I need to shuffle because my only out is a Werefox bodyguard to hit the Shieldred. Um, so I just need to shuffle and get where Fox Bodyguard on top. So I cast Shaman of the pack. Um, I get a Dwinin's Elite. Nothing else is good. And I hit the where Fox Bodyguard on top. Um, so that's great, except for I can't cast it right now. But I'm going to cast it on my upkeep and win the game. Um, brought him down to three, feeling super confident about where we are, all that. Stay Swift and Vivian, and I can see it on the spot. Because um, I cannot... Uh, I can't beat that, right? Because if this is dead, then I can't cast this on upkeep. So really heads up play from Doomwake. Um, really awesome. And I also don't have the, the mana to, to pay. And there are four mana shaman that can either gain life or... Um, yeah, no, there is. Um, there's a four mana one that could gain life too. So you just can't hit it with Collecting Company. I, I just don't think there's room in the deck. Um, but, you know, that option is always there. Um, I, I just don't... Uh, Go for that. It's called Skemvar Shadow Sage. Um, it's a decent card. I play it in my Commander Elf deck. Pretty cool. Um, all right, game three. Not an interesting game. I wish I could fast forward through this one faster than it's already going to go because this game is boring. We keep a really solid hand. Super happy with this. Got some nice development. Um, really nice curve. Um, that fatal push is uh, <laughs> pretty brutal. Um, but, you know. That's fine. We can't double spell the turn, whatever. Um, player doing in delete now, a little late. Have Werefox Bodyguard for later. 
uh, but you you know you're gonna see we just don't draw uh, another spell I don't think this game maybe we draw one later unlucky unlucky yeah so after having such a killer hand games one and two um, I kind of threw game one but so I'm trying to get them to invest mana maybe like I can untap in Vivian or something like that if they invest all their mana into this so. Um, that's not bad. What just happened is not bad, but too little, too late. So we did draw one on land. Let's see if we draw another one. Taking some desperation blocks, which is fine. And then I don't. I just don't think we can beat Shieldred. Yeah, we're dead. Going to round five. Um, two land, a bunch of spells. Seems great. I don't remember what we were playing against here. Is it? F yeah, okay, it's it's a Bring Delight deck. Um, not the best hand against a Bring Delight deck. Um, trying to get some development, trying to get some early damage, things like that. Um, you know, Leyline Binding, good card against what we drew. Um, this is pretty good. You know, we can Leaf Ground and draw a card and attack. Never complaining about that. Gone to a Collected Company, not complaining about that. Feeling pretty good. Hopefully they don't have like a turn three sweeper. That'd be horrible. But instead they just have a bunch of late line bindings. Um, so we can get some attacks in. Not the best attacks, but I'm not going to collect a company into like a sweeper here or something. I know they play three mana sweepers. Um, with Change of the Rocks on the stack, I'll Coco. You know, if we hit Werefox Bodyguard, we can like exile it or something like that. We don't. If we get Shaman, it deals, deals one extra damage. Um, I think we are in a lethal position. That solidifies it, I, I think. We'll see. It's a lot of damage. Yep, more than lethal. Added the whole time. All right, so that went really well. And this is where the sideboard plan kind of like really showed um, showed up and, and showed that it, it works really well. So... Um, post board, keep, keep a hand with some development, some court of calling. Um, seems great. Lands and one drops are all welcome. Leaf ground, not so much there, but that's okay. Still happy to draw leaf ground either way. Um, play the war master, try to get some development next turn. Fable, not our favorite thing. Um, and yeah, we, we're not not exactly loving where we are, but we um, we can cord for two, and cord for two is is great. No, nothing wrong with a cord for two. Um, so they attack with a shaman. Um, they're either drawing a three mana sweeper or um, trying to play bring to light this turn. So I take the block. Um, even if they like kill the lord, that's not like the biggest deal. You know, we have cord for another lord or something like that. And then they cast Bring Delight into Court for two, which um, loses them the game on the spot because we can uh, grab Janeth that Magistrate, and then nothing else they draw matters. We also have another Court up for an Anti-Sweeper. Um, super happy with that. Um, get one more trigger. I guess we didn't draw on that one. Kind of surprised. Oh, this is lethal. Trigger on the stack. Hit him. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, so when Shaman hits trigger on the stack, we court for another Shaman, so they both see each other. Um, and then had a two over lethal. So that's round five. Went really well. Round six. I, I don't remember this one either. Oh. So really good matchup here. So we're playing against Phoenix. We have a decent hand. Um, I knew I was against Phoenix. I actually might have mulliganed this if, if I had known. Um, this this person plays Phoenix. Phoenix Spirits. We're playing against Spirits. Um, this person plays Spirits all the time. We know Border Calling is not the best in multiples in that matchup. And obviously we get maximum punished for it. Um, we really want to be able to like double spell early and things like that. We, we win pretty much all of those games. And... Uh, I think I just chose to keep a hand that like was really easy to toss into the bin. Super punished for keeping a double cord hand by drawing no other spell and triple cord. 
Um, but yeah, there, there's not much we could do, right? Um, we're we have a really hard time uh, beating Supreme Phantom um, with a curious obsession on it. Um, if they have disruption, and you know they they had just enough disruption. Um, looks like I'm playing around nothing. I don't know. I, I think I'm playing pretty poorly at this point. I don't know what happened to me. Um, but we just lose to the Supreme Phantom. Second curious obsession is uh, the nail in the coffin. I can't. I don't think I can resolve another spell, so I'm just going to quit out. Um, that was around six game one, so around six game two. Um, you're going to see almost exactly the same thing happen. We mulligan. We keep a pretty, pretty good hand. Yeah, this this will be on YouTube. Yep. Um, keep a pretty good hand. Super happy with it. Um, just spare sentinels in it. Love just spare sentinel being in the opener. Um, get some really good development. Um, portable holes, obviously great. Curious obsession. That's probably the best three cards they could have in their opener, right? Um, so you know, not the best spot, but you know, still still pretty good. Um, I I was thinking about maybe casting court of uh, collecting company here and kind of like two for winning them, but then I feel like I'm just losing to like spell queller, um, and that doesn't feel great. So I want to just do some more development, um, give them a taste of their own medicine, you know, get some attacks in, get some cards drawn. I'm never resolving this collecting company. Also, just quick by the way, um, I board out all but one collecting company in this matchup, uh, and I drew it. So I almost boarded this out for a judge's familiar, but I didn't pull the trigger. Um, so yeah, that's it. We get him pretty close to dead. Um, this is this was a little bit of a frustrating, frustrating one to lose, especially with this last one being Geislight Snare. Um, so if they eat the Lord and then Geislight Snare this, there's pretty much no hope for us. They, they hit us where it hurt. Um, and even though this is a really good matchup. They do have draws that can keep up with us. And, you know, that that was just not enough. So round six loss into a good matchup. Round seven, I think this is the last. No, there's eight rounds. Okay. Um, I think I'm against Spirits again on the draw this time. Mulligan. Um, throw Collecting Company back down. Yeah, we're against Spirits again. But it's banned Spirits this time. We draw a Fox, which was uh, what we were trying to draw the whole time last game. And um, get some really solid development. They don't feel like they can attack, which I love when they don't feel like they can attack. Um, they're trying to um, bait with this uh, Mausoleum Wanderer. They flash in the Spectral Sailor. Um, but, you know, we were a Fox Bodyguard anyway. This is super interesting. Thank you. Yeah, Geistlight Snare is, is super frustrating. Um, yeah, so we're trading resources. Um, I feel like they're not aggressive enough right now, so what I do is I cord for a Lord, because I'm also not aggressive enough, and I'm just trying to kind of draw out of this slump. I don't want to fall behind in cards. Um, and I, and I kind of do. I kind of draw out of it a little bit. They get some good cards, though. Right, they're they they're really laying on the hurt. Um, thirteen is is not not fun. Um, we get through this shaman of the pack. We can draw a card, and um, I do the same thing here. Trigger on the stack. Um, I can cast this Werefox bodyguard. I don't think I can draw a card with this one though. Um, and kill their supreme phantom seems pretty huge. Get some damage in. Also, they should have tapped something down with shackle geist. That was bad on me. Um, I should have played around that. And they concede. So what like they could have drawn Collected Company into uh, Supreme Phantom. They could have drawn like Skyclave Apparition into Supreme Phantom. I don't know. They they had outs, but um things were looking grim for them. Um game two of round seven, is that where we are? Yes. Okay. Um keep it a little bit riskier of a hand, but really low mana curve, love it. Um, that's not what I want to draw, but that's okay. Um, against so I, I I talk about sometimes that like we want to lead on just bear sentinel if we can, but not against spirits. Against spirits, I want just bear sentinel be untapped on turn two a lot of the time. So you'll see me lead on elvish mystic because um, that blocking a one one flyer in the air if they don't play a one drop um, is you know not trivial. Happens sometimes. 
Um, so we get some development. I think they they have the counter for this. Um, so it was actually nice that we led on Elvish Mystic because uh, more Master would have been countered if I didn't. That's another reason to do it. Um, our one of Reclamation Sage was drawn. We love to see it. We'd especially love to draw land so it can't get countered. And there we are. Feeling pretty good about our board state. You know, they could collect a company and, and just end this, but they don't have it. Big fan of when they don't have it. Um, we can't really play around anything right here. Uh, any counter spell is just a hard counter spell. Um, if I had, like, Judge's Familiar, I could. But I just wanted to get uh, this through when I could, right? Like, they're tapped out. I'll just get it through now, whatever. Now they have like two really high quality targets. Um, and now we can kind of just start turning through our deck. Leaf, untapping with the Leaf Crown Visionary, with the creature card in hand. Really, uh, really powerful. Um, keep developing. Set up for a quarter calling that they can't counter would be really nice. Um, setting up for this is the ultimate on Elvish Warmaster. Not bad. Um, but we can get. Some damage through, and it looks like they conceded. That seems like an early concession, but maybe they have one card in hand, so probably hard to win to win. Um, great. Last one's round eight and round nine. Is this? I think this is uh, top eight. I thought they had a different name for it once you got there, but <sighs> all right. On the draw against mono green. This is a really good hand. But they have a really better hand. Nothing wrong with what we're doing, though. Great development with War Master, setting up for a collecting company, setting up for a Sentinel Stalwart into collecting company. As long as they don't have a big payoff, we're probably good. And I actually throw a little bit here. Is a full list available? Um, sorry that I, I miss you saying that. Um, not the best collected company. Yeah, I have the list available. Um, I can uh, throw it on screen in, in a moment. Um, Hmm. What's the best way? Oh, you know what? It's um it's on goldfish right now. MTG Goldfish. Um the exact list that I played. Somewhere, yeah. Only can chat. There it is. Cool. All right. Um, so I, I collected company. It's, it's decent. You know, drawing lands isn't good, but um, we're not in the worst spot. I did that on my turn in case I got a wear fox bodyguard takes away their mana. Um, seemed relevant. All right. So they play Karn. They don't have a, a, a great thing to do with Karn yet. They can get their Kiora or whatever, but. Like, they didn't have a, a, an a incredible silver, silver bullet, I guess. That Storm of the Festival wasn't great. And this is where I throw the game. Now, it was going to be close anyway. But, um, quick quick just shout out. I clicked through my attacks. I was going to send, like, everything at Karn um, so that they basically have nothing. And then I have, like, Court of Calling if I wanted to, you know, get a second Leaf Crown or whatever. Um, but I, Karn was dead. And I just passed, um, and that was basically a concession. They just combo off here. I don't get another turn. Nothing interesting happens. Um, so I'm just going to go to the next one. It was going to be close if I did that play, but it was just a lock for them because I clicked through my attack steps. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, where Fox is an elf. It's huge, huge. Um, great hand. A little bit mana heavy. We'd love to draw land or one drops, preferably a one drop. So because we don't have the one drop anyway, Dwin's Lead's just a better play. Can attack for more things. They get a Silex. That's not that good for us. Um, so I make this play, just quick pause. I make this play because I'm like, oh, it forces them to Silex. They're going to like get extra things or whatever. Um, that was uh, short-sighted to me because they just do this.
I just add the one. I can't cast anything in my hand if they kill these. I was like, oh my goodness, did I just lose the game right there? But sometimes you just draw the land. They're pretty low. Let's just get in there. And this leaf ground will finish it up. If I draw white land, Bear Fox will finish it up instead. Um, but yeah, their hand was a little bit a little bit rough, and uh we are able to present lethal this following turn. Yeah. Weird, weird uh game for sure. That was not a that was not super clean on me, but I shouldn't have played the second one drop. Okay. Game three. Um kind of mediocre hand, but good development. You know, turn one, Linarels, turn two, Dwindon's Elite, turn three, Collected Company. Um super helps that they don't play an elf. Uh this game this matchup gets so much better if they don't elf. Um <clears throat> so yeah, we get some development here. You know, nothing too fancy happening. Next turn we're gonna Temple Garden Shock and Collected Company, likely. Um, but they uh they play this thing. <laughs> I was like, how how do I lose this game? It, it's probably just because they trigger this thing, right? Like, look at my board, look at my hand. Uh, if I eat this, you know, it's probably not the best thing that I could have done. But stopping them from doing any silly shenanigans and like this just happening to work seemed ideal to me at the time. Um, so that's what I did. Just stop their development. Green's development is like just as important as Elves' development. You know, it's it's rare that they like you you send turn to them and they untap with absolutely nothing and can like combo off. They need that build of devotion. Um, so stopping that, stopping this trigger, I, I, I thought was important. Um, getting some chip damage. You know, set it up for a situation where Shaman is lethal. Have quarter, have Coco. Like I feel like if Coco misses, I'm still in a great spot. But I can't cast Shaman. I, I'm just realizing that now. I need a black mana. So I take just Spare Sentinel just to be able to cast Shaman, and, and that's pretty much game. There's the concession. Um, so that was around 8, round 9. Playing against Boats. Decent hand. I don't know what I'm playing against. This game's really cool, though. Really close game. Um, I think, if I remember correctly. They're developing. I'm developing. They are super aggressive on the play, which is uh, unfortunate for us. Um, we get to be a, have some good development on the draw. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have chumpers for days as long as I, I'm given that opportunity. Hitting us for seven is not part of that plan, but they don't have trample, so as long as I can develop nicely, um, I can you know kind of draw out of this and, and things like that. So I'm gonna send with War Master if I remember correctly. I send with both. We got enough chumpers. Um, we have some decent blockers and things like that. Um, so they Huntsman agree. Bone Crusher Giant is very good. They already have the Valderan Thrill Seeker. That's very good. Um, they have to do this pre-combat, so I know that they have Valderan Thrill Seeker. So I have to block the 5-5 five five for sure. And that's all I have to do. I can take the rest, because if... So th they do exactly what I was planning on them doing, but if they Valderan kill my um, Lord, and then they stomp this, I have exactly lethal with these. Um, because they have no blockers. So I feel like they were just a little bit too aggressive here um, with one of their attacks. If they left something back, I don't think I had it. Yeah, because this is an attack to bring them to zero, exactly. Yeah. Um, like, they probably should have left this back. Um, game two. Looks like I'm going to lose this game. Don't really remember this one. We're on the draw. Solid hand. Look at that hand. Doesn't look like we're gonna lose this one. They develop. I develop. Stomp. Excellent for them. Um, we're gonna try to trigger multiple war masters. You know. Um, oh, sky sovereign. Yeah. Okay. We're dead. Can't beat that, right? Um, so the enemy sky sovereign here. And we have the Werefox Bodyguard for it, right? So we just need Werefox Bodyguard to never die. And then we have, like, maybe a chance. Um, but this is pretty big, too, right? So I have an opportunity here. I, I tanked a lot. 
um, do I play Leaf Crown and then Mystic so that a Stomp can't kill this and then I can like maybe recover? Or do I go for Chump Blockers? They only have one card in hand. They already use a Stomp. I think the list only plays three. Um, so I advocated for um, just developing and then playing this next turn. Cost me the game. I'd make the same decision again, though. Um, yeah, we're, we, we concede to Stomp, right? Because this comes back into play, triggers again. Not good for us. Um, game three. Super solid hand, no complaints. Absolutely zero notes here. They mold a 5-2, really rough for them. Um, I'm leading on just Spare Sentinel because it doesn't really matter. It's not like they can ever really remove it game one anyway. Um, develop, develop. You can set up for next turn, Mystic and Collecting Company. Um, doesn't really pay off, but that's okay. Um, so I have the option to wear Fox Bodyguard here and kind of tie down their mana. Um, but I, I advocate for holding, casting this collected company. Um, we get some good things anyway. We get to draw a card with this one now. That's super great. Now if they want to sack, they have to sack their mana. Pretty big. They're at eight. And it kind of wastes that third chapter. Rending Volley is a card I did not expect to see. And then they concede. I don't have a lot going on here. Um, but if they don't do anything, I'm going to hit him for five. They're at three. They need to be able to play two creatures next turn. Doesn't seem super likely. So um, that was our last one we won. Hooray. Uh, we then play against Phoenix. Um, game one's pretty close. I think I make a misplay. Um, I, I make a pretty pretty huge misplay. I, I take it back. I did not just make a misplay. It was a big one. Um, but this is a ma hard matchup anyway. So um, I'll talk about the interesting things as they happen. Um, you know, they, they're trading resources. Um, I decide to leaf crown because I, I think it's easier to get this trigger to happen than it is to get this to happen. So I got to throw something out there to a removal spell. There it is. Feel pretty good that they have to Lightning Axe there, though. They didn't play a 2-drop. Treasure Cruise on turn 3 is not what I wanted, though. Um, so I play Shaman of the Pack. I can double spell next turn. Um, otherwise, I didn't have uh, very many great options. Um, I just have to play until the Ledger Shredder Trigger. Elves isn't going to win if I don't do that. Um, I did miss damage, though. I should have attacked the Shaman first. We'll throw that out there. I'm playing pretty poorly at this point in the tournament. They got another Ledger Shredder, you know, they got another Ledger Shredder, so um, didn't really, wasn't in the cards here. I should have, in response to this trigger, corded if I wanted to cord. Instead, opt to lose the game. Why would I cord here? They're representing Spell Pierce hard. I could play the game in a way where Spell Pierce is never going to ever counter anything that I ever do ever, um, but instead, I, I choose to not do that, so... <laughs> not the best play by me that probably lost me the game even harder than I was already losing it um, but I think there was a chance before I played into that spell pierce uh, definitely not after though um, nothing interesting happens from here they're gonna trigger this uh, they just start going off I, I can't really do anything I can never get through these guys um, and I'm getting a little tired so I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna play the rest of this one right this spike field hazard doesn't even matter I'm dead in the air um, last game <clears throat> Feels bad to end the tournament like this, but Mulligan, Mulligan, <laughs> bad five. Um, you know, not the end of the world. Maybe we could draw into it. We're really going to need a collect company or something. And it feels nice that they played this, though. So this is kind of nice. I can kind of just like um, draw every turn, right? With my extra mana, I'm not going to really trigger their ledger shredder for them. That feels great. That does not feel great. That plan no longer works. If I draw land. I can like get two cycles of this, but uh, you know, fire impulse is uh, pretty bad. They got a phoenix already. Yeah, turn three. That deck got so much more consistent with sleight of hand. Um, now I'm thinking maybe if I cast this collected company, I, I have a chance, right? Like, 
there there is maybe a chance um Lightning X there is pretty bad because now I can't even cast this just spare a sentinel uh, um, without triggering letter shredder. So yeah, things pretty, feel pretty bad. You know, they only have two cards left. Maybe there's a chance, but they discarded pieces of the puzzle, so it doesn't seem like it. Treasure Cruise hit me for a third of my life. Uh, I'll try to collect a company and fail. I'm doing it on their upkeep. Either Gus is a uh, the concession either gust so yeah once again i have no chance my collective company have to hit double wear fox and it is not going to do that we can we can see the last moments so final moments they hit me for six i go to one i'm dead to almost anything except for double wear fox off this collective company and we don't do it <laughs> so uh there is the game um so super happy with how things went, obviously. Um wouldn't change a card in this list right now. Um once again, if you're if you're tuning in, um Judge of Familiars, you know, just kind of something I'm playing with. Uh fourth where Fox Bodyguard probably isn't necessary. Those two could really easily help the Boros uh match up a little bit more just by being um the fog. Uh what's it called? Pause for reflection. That that's probably the card, the 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 two cards that I'd recommend in this slot. Um but anyway. Thanks so, for my, so much for watching. I'm going to update this to YouTube. So everybody say hi, YouTube. Um, I'll continue to you know develop this deck. If, you, um, if you've been following me or wanting to know more about elves, uh, I don't really have too much time to stream anymore. I try to do it when I can, but I do play a lot. Um, so I have a Discord. I can drop that invite to that Discord into that. It, it, it was pretty active. It's, it's getting a little bit more active again um, now that... There we go. It was. It, it will get more active again now that uh, I think more people are playing this deck. So um, there's the link. Yeah. Hi YouTube. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, go give this a like on YouTube so that more people can find the deck. And uh, have a great Wednesday, everybody. Bye.